Congratulations. Yes, I am. Okay. So this is JJ, another member of the Beyond the Bars Foundation. JJ has a personal story he would like to share with us. He's been through it. He came out and he's doing good. I bet he's got support, resources that a lot of other yes. people don't have, yes. maybe. Yes. Yes. I'm going to let him share his story because he knows it way better than I or anybody else does. So go ahead, JJ. My name is James Johnson. I'm a part of Beyond the Bars. <laughs> tell us, tell us. I, uh, I did. I was incarcerated for four and a half years at Metro West. I was a trustee in, in uh, medical housing, one Delta two, as they claimed. With that being said, I was a role model. I set the bar high for some young brothers, for those that wanted and was willing to accept the knowledge. Oh. I tried, I tried to put back into to the community. But with that being said, I, I dodged the fears twice. And it's not easy. God has been good to me. September will be two years I've been home. And I have no problem paying bills. I get up, go to work, and I work hard. And I just turned 54. So I don't need no props. I give He's myself props. Yes. <laughs> yes, but he it's hard. It's hard. Favor. It's hard. Yes, God on my team. Yeah. You have to have God in your life as well. That's right. I mean, if you're not willing to change, you, you, it's a revival though. You're gonna end up going back where you came That's from. That's absolutely yeah. true. So, and it's only for us, and we all know that. So you all know it. You have to come. You got to get out here, and I mean, it's gonna be a struggle changing over, but. You don't have to worry about looking over your shoulder and worrying about the police. You Absolutely. Did. Thank you so much for sharing your story, JJ. JJ yes. was hesitant to talk, yes. but I felt like yeah, yeah, he had yeah. something in his heart or had a story which he could share. And One he time might. for Beyond the Bars. It just might be on the bar. Beyond the Bars. Also, I just want to add to this. I worked at a corrections facility in Taylorsville, North, North Carolina. I worked at, the, um, at that facility. I don't quite remember the name, but it was a three month nursing contract which is how I moved to North Carolina from Maryland and I met a lot of people who were in there and it was sad to me because I visited multiple centers because they used to have us flip from one jail to another if they were short of a nurse um, it was predominantly black young black men young black men locked up we're out here in the community wandering we're looking trying to figure out where all the black men are, they're locked up in jail. How is it that all these black men are in jail? Why can we not find rehabilitative programs to put these guys in so when they come out of jail, they can be better members of society? Some of them come from a background where they have nothing. It puts them in a position where they may have to take something from another person that doesn't belong to them just because they're trying to get by. I have never experienced lock up and I do not take that for granted. I came from a middle class family. I was not, I did not live in affluence, but I always had enough. So I know that's a privilege that some people don't have. Sometimes it's what you come from, what you experience, what you see growing up. You become a product, a product of the community that you grew up in. A lot of these guys are in jail not because of who they are, that where you're socialized in an environment where all you see is crime and you have to struggle to put food in your mouth, you have to struggle to keep a roof over your head, maybe you have a single mother working multiple jobs, there is no adult supervision, there are no, there's no family support. That's how these kids end up committing crimes that, end, that land them in jail. So we need to show mercy, find programs that will help keep these kids, kids engaged in society so they don't feel the need to go out there and commit crimes and kill people and take from other people what doesn't belong to them. So we are a family and it takes a village to raise children. We need to come together, find ways and give these kids resources, give them opportunities where they don't feel the need to, 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 to commit crimes or be gang members or whatever it is. They're looking for role models. And sometimes they find those role models in the gang members because they don't have it at home, they don't have it at school, Families need to step up, be there for these children. It truly takes a village to raise a child. And I think if we all come together and do it as a group, we may start to see some differences in our society. I thank you for your story. Thank you. Us brothers, <laughs> us brothers, 
We need to step up and be role models. Beat up for your kids. That's right. Don't let the streets raise your kids. I, raise your kids. That's right. I love mine. I'm standing up for mine. I was raised that? in a foster home. Yeah. I was adopted. I was child abused. The foster home is not good. Don't let the streets raise your kids. Beat up for your kids. You man enough to make them? Be man enough to take care of them. Amen to that. Thank you.